Now, let me introduce uh, the speaker of the day. Welcome, Dr. Vidya R. She is a scientist working for the Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute in India. She graduated in fisheries science from College of Fisheries, Panangar. Further, she took her master's and PhD in fisheries from Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Mumbai. After qualifying ARS, she joined as a scientist in CMFRI in 2014. And her current areas of interest, uh, research interests are cephalopod and bivalve fisheries, molluscan biology, molluscan mariculture, and their population genetics. She has several national and international papers to her credit and have contributed to the growth of commercial bivalve mariculture in Kerala. Today, she is going to share some of this story. So please welcome uh, Vithya again, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you unmute, uh, Vidya? Unmute. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Deepak, for the kind words. Okay, a very good evening to all. Maybe a late evening or a uh, uh, early morning to many of you. Anyway, uh, uh, very thankful for this opportunity once again. Uh, shall I uh, start sharing the screen, Deepak? Yeah, please. Thank you. Deepak, is it visible? Yes, it is. Thank okay, you. Okay. Okay. Um, today, our topic is enhancing the shellfish production through community engagement. Okay. Shellfish means uh, we have crustaceans and mollusks, but now uh, we are concentrating more on the mollusk and mariculture. Okay. And uh, this is a graph showing the major groups of mollusks formed uh, around the world. And this is from FAO. Actually, uh, the crossospace species, that is the oysters, are the most widely the cultured uh, the species among the mollusks around the world. And coming to the global scenario, we know uh, uh, as per FAO 2018, and the global aquaculture production is about 82.1 million tons, and the mollusks contribute, mainly the biovas contribute, more than 20%, that is 17.7 million tons. And the rate of increase in the production is growing. Uh, coming to the Indian scenario, this is a graph showing the production of uh, um, uh, bivalve aquaculture uh, uh, from the aquaculture, uh, from production from the bivalve farming uh, for the past 10 years. Okay, um, among the bivalves, we are farming the oysters, mussels, and clams. And before going to the main topic, let me tell some details about the uh, basic procedure of uh, bivalve farming. Even though I know you people are very well aware of it, just a few points about the farming activities. We all know the oysters in India, these are the major species of oysters, or the commercial important species of oysters in the country. Crassostrae madrasensis, Rivularis, Sacrostrae cuculata, and Crassostrae griffoides. And on the uh, west coast, west coast, um, uh, west coast, we are uh, culturing mostly the Crassostrae madrasensis. And this is a table showing the distribution of commercially important oysters in our country. Um, okay. And coming to the oyster farming, and the, the oyster farming, we are selecting the natural beds of oysters for the farming. 
actually we can use uh, the hatchery produce seed and also from the natural fat for you know, the growing the oysters. But uh, normally we are culturing the oysters in their natural beds. And these are the oyster beds in Kerala. So we are concentrating more on the Kerala. Uh, so the, these are the oyster beds in Kerala, that is Ashtamudi and Jaintanar lakes, Cochin backwaters and estuaries and creeks of Dharmadam, etc. And the reproduction, we know the oysters mature within six to 12 months in, in, in our country. And the male and the female are separate. And annually, a female oyster can produce about 100 million eggs. But coming to the world scenario, these um, oysters are cultured in about 72 countries. And the major species culture are classes by Daigas and Rivularis. And the China is having the maximum production with about 81.4% as per FAO. And other countries like Vietnam, Korea, etc are also culturing the oysters. And these are some of the basic information for, far, for farming. And uh, in the West Coast, the spawning of the oysters occurs during the post monsoon time. And uh, the spat, that is the seed, is about at the 10 millimeter. And how we are culturing oysters is that we are putting the culture material. Culture material is the material we are putting for the attachment of the seed or the spat uh, attachment. And after uh, about six to seven months of farming, this fat becomes the adult of about 70 to 90 millimeter in about six to seven months. So six to seven months is the farming period for the um, oysters. And the farming method, uh, I mean, uh, when we are doing the farming, we are putting this culture materials, that is the materials for the uh, seed collection or the materials for the fat attachment, we are putting up, uh, 15 days after the peak spawning period, that is 15 days, the spawning period occurs in the post monsoon. So after 15 days after the peak spawning period, we are putting the culture materials for the spat settlement. And these are the major um, uh, major procedures for the farming. There is site collection, the preparation of the culture material, and the farm construction, the seed collection, monitoring, and harvest. Okay. And uh, the selection of the site is the most crucial thing in the bival farming. And um, uh, it should be done very cautiously. And the site with favorable water quality parameters has to be selected. And site with natural oyster beds with uh, favorable water quality parameters has to be selected. And this is the um, image showing the rent. What is the rent? We, we all know. That is, the culture is the material used for the fat collection or the seed collection of oysters. And the rent is an oyster shell which is strung on um, three millimeter nylon rod with a spacing of about 15 to 20 centimeter. So uh, we are putting these rents. Uh, these rents can be made from the oyster shells. We are putting this rent on the farms for fat collection during the peak spawning period, 15 days after the peak spawning period of the uh, bivalves. So coming to the mussel farming, approximately 70 species of edible mussels are cultured and harvested worldwide, and the China also ranks first in the mussel production. Then the common species of mussels in the world are Perna viridis, uh, in Intica, Canal Ecolatus, uh, Nitrilus edulis. And in India, we are culturing uh, the Perna viridis and Perna Intica. And the mussel farming activity on the backwaters of Kerala started first in Padana and the Chirubutu Panchayat in uh, Kasaragod district. And why we farm mussels? We, we are collecting the seeds of the mussels from the natural beds normally. We can also uh, the culture the mussels from the hatchery produced seed, but normally we are um, collecting the seeds from the natural bed. And why we are collecting the seeds from the natural beds without allowing them to grow in natural beds? Because in the natural beds, uh, uh, there is no adequate spot for growth because of the crowding. And also the uniform size of, uh, of mussels cannot be obtained in the natural beds. So we are collecting uh, the wild seed uh, from the natural bed and we are growing. And the growing on the ropes. Actually, um, after collecting the uh, seeds from the natural beds, we are seeding these uh, seeds on a rope. And um, uh, for, for one meter rope, we are seeding about 750 to uh, 1000 grams, that is 750 grams to the one kilogram of seed we are seeding on one meter rock in a nylon rock or, um, or a fire rock. Uh, mostly we are using the nylon rock. And after the seeding this rock, uh, seeding the seeds on the nylon rock, we are wrapping it with the cotton mosquito net. And then we are hanging it on the farms. And then 
after about uh, 10 to 14 days, this uh, cotton mosquito net gets disinfected and uh, only uh, the seeded muscle blocks will remain in the farm and they will grow. And, and these are some of the, uh, the pictures of muscle seed collection. And after uh, seed collection, uh, they are seeding it on the rock, nylon rock or the fire rock. This, this is a seeded drop, which is wrapped with uh, cotton mosquito net. And coming to the farming methods of biovas, there are two methods of farming, on bottom and off bottom. On bottom means directly drawing on the substratum. And off bottom, there are different methods like rack method, rough method, and long line method. Here I'm mentioning only the rack method because what we are following for the uh, oyster farming and mussel farming here is a, a rack method. And for the oyster farming, we are uh, doing the rack and run method. And this is a model farm. And the standard size of a model farm, we have fixed this five meter into five meter and the number of runs um, about 300, 300 numbers. And uh, the, we are constructing this uh, mode, uh, farms with the bamboo poles. So 16 numbers of vertical bamboo poles and uh, 14 numbers of horizontal bamboo poles. And the raw for the uh, run construction is about three millimeter and 300 numbers of drops with five shells with a spacing of about 15 to 20 centimeter uh, are hung from the track. And um, these are the farms we have put uh, in the field for oyster farming. For oil, and this can be used for oyster and mussel farming. And uh, the farm, money, farm management and the periodic farm management is required uh, for um, checking any algal blooms are there, any fouling is there, or any uh, disease um, invasion is there, or the predator invasion is there. So periodic farm management is necessary. Then comes the harvest. And this is the basic procedure. And coming to the success stories uh, uh, or the scientific interventions uh, through community engagement for increasing the production. What is the role of CMFRA? Then the existing technologies of muscle, muscle and oyster farming, because uh, the, the oyster and muscle farming technology has been uh, standardized from 1995 onwards. So these existing technologies of muscle and oyster farming were converted into income generating activity for the coastal fishers, uh, especially the women fishers, especially the women farmers, particularly for the women. Uh, this has been done under the uh, ICR NIP project the World Bank funded NIEP project. So under this project, a value chain on high value fishes from the mariculture system is implemented to de develop a sustainable high value shellfish value chain. So the, the main objectives of this uh, activity are the commercialization of the farming activities. So it will lead to the development of several value chains, which will increase the value of the product and the production of value added products like ready to serve and the ready to cook products and the popularization and promotion of farmed products and the popular uh, production of oyster flavor extract and the commercialization of farmed value added products. These are the objectives and the efforts were focused to make this value chain economically viable and sustainable. So for this, um, a, um, a village cluster was selected in the Ernakulam district, the Muthukunam village cluster in the Ernakulam district was identified for the implementation of these activities. So women self-help groups who are interested in oyster farming were identified and they were trained uh, about this oyster farming and the bival activity for, um, uh, for, the, for farming methods. They were trained all the farming methods and the technical guidance were given at each and every step, right from the rain making, uh, then farm construction, then harvest, and um, after, um, the pro uh, after the harvest, the processing. So uh, the scientific interventions were made in each and every step and the training were given in all the, um, uh, 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 all the areas. And this is the, the farm construction and the trainings were given. And these are the pictures showing the harvest, harvest of the oysters and the harvest of the mussels. And uh, with the technical guidance, uh, uh, technical support and the 100% financial support under the NIP project, these uh, uh, women farmers were trained to farm oysters and mussels. 
I think about uh, the 40 women from various alpha groups uh, took part in these activities and they were farming more than uh, 15 bivalve units every year. And this, uh, the season starts from the November, December every year. And this, uh, uh, the growing period, the excess for about the six to seven months. And after the harvest, at an average, average, these farmers were getting 1.5 tons from each bivalve unit. And after the harvest, this farm produce is brought to the vegetation plant, which is set by CMFRI. This is the harvest. And uh, what is the need of vegetation plant? So it, um, it's for, actually, we can take the oysters or the mussels from the natural beds and we can give it to the local markets, but it uh, does not add any value. It does not ensure any safety. So um, for adding the value for the product and for increasing the um, unit price of the product, so we have set up a preparation plant in the village. Um, uh, the bivas, as we know, they are all future figures. So in, during the process, they used to accumulate uh, various uh, biological suspended materials, uh, which includes harmful microorganisms in their gut. So these uh, materials have to be removed. Before the product reaches the market, the, these materials have to be removed, and the material should be safe for consumption. So with this aim, a common generation facility was set up in this um, Motogunam village. So it aims to supply quality oysters to the public. So such oysters command a premium price in the market. So this increases the income of the farmers, the profit of the farmers. And, and the unit is specially designed in tanks with slope inlets and outlets. And uh, the depuration unit, which was set up in the village, um, is working with uh, the uh, UV filters and also the cartridge filters for purifying the water. So with an aim of improving the value addition or with an aim of adding the value to the product uh, and uh, thereby increasing the value of the product and also for increasing the income of the farmers and thereby uh, improving their livelihood status, a full question. Uh, the bivar processing unit has been set up in this Mutakunam village for uh, development of value added products. So, an oyster value added production unit, that unit was set up in the village for the uh, value addition of the product. And these are the glimpses of this uh, um, oyster wrap unit. So, after the harvest, after the harvest, um, here we are showing the oysters. After the harvest, the oysters or the mussels, they will be jet washed thoroughly to remove the dirt uh, from their surface. And after that, they will be put in the depuration tanks. These are the depuration tanks. So they will be put in the depuration tanks for about 18 to 24 hours. Uh, these tanks are having UV filtered water, uh, UV filtered sea water. So the oysters after jet washing will be placed in this uh, and the depuration tank for about 18 to 24 hours. So uh, now these women farmers, this is a picture showing the women farmers putting this oyster run in the depuration tank. These are the oysters uh, in the depuration tanks. This is the depuration protocol that is um, harvested mussels, then the depuration tank and um, uh, uh, they, they will be putting uh, in the depuration tank overnight or for about uh, 12 to 18 hours or 18 to 24 hours. And um, we will be replacing the water twice. After the depuration, we will be putting the oysters in a steamer. This is a new innovation by, uh, by CMFRI. And this design helps to speed up the oyster offering without the loss of moisture because in the traditional method, boiling the oysters we are boiling the oysters in water so by um, the boiling the oysters so there is a chance of losing them the water content of the oysters this because the oyster is having a liquid inside and this liquid is known as nectar and this oyster nectar is having uh, a, a very good properties and just having medicinal value also and it is having a high demand and the high investments so when we are uh, traditionally boil, uh, when we are boiling the oysters in the water, so this nectar will be lost to the water. So um, there is no chance of collecting this liquid that is the oyster nectar. So in this uh, um, innovation, that is uh, uh, steaming, 
we are using a boiler is a boiler is having uh, boiler is boiling the water and the steam out of this boiling is used for steaming this uh, um, oyster or depurated oyster pans so um, when the, the oyster shell gets open this nectar or the oyster nectar can be collected on the trays it is shown here so it um, it uh, the reduces the um, the loss of the moisture and also it improves the yield and oyster nectar can be collected so it um, in a one way it also increases the uh, the income of the fishermen because this oyster nectar can also be um, sold uh, so they were selling this oyster nectar at the rate of rupees 200 per bottle to the high end restaurants uh, so uh, it is having a high demand in hotels in need of five star hotels and this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, meat shipping method after the uh, the steaming um, the, the the meat the meat will be taken out of the shell and the significant interventions or the scientific interventions um, the the commercialization of the farming technique has led to the development of several value chains so now the farm produce um, is all just live oysters or the live mussels and also as value added products so two new value chains has been developed the fresh decorated oysters for live consumption in high end restaurants and the production and marketing of value added products for farmed oysters from the tap unit and it was sold under the brand name misuris so these are the products which were which were developed oyster curry in reportable pouch and individual cooked frozen oyster these are other products individually cooked frozen oysters frozen oyster curry the canned oyster curry and many more items and these are the significant um, in, uh, innovations i have already told the oyster the nectar um, can be collected using this um, improved method of steaming so oyster nectar uh, utilization technology research in the uh, research in two products that is frozen oyster nectar soup and frozen oyster nectar rasam and this is um, a slide showing the oyster value chain approach and this is the oyster hatchery where the oyster spats are produced uh, because for farming we can depend on natural spats and also from the hatchery produced spats and this is the uh, uh, hatchery which is um, the producing spats uh, for oyster farming so the the oyster shells with span attached will be brought to the farms for farming and after the harvest it will be put in the decoration tanks then um, um, after that uh, um, um, the value addition will be taken there and it will be sold so um, is the reason uh, there is a um, there is an increase in demand for the live oyster consumption the high end restaurants and um, the investors indicate that the unit price of the oysters has increased to several times so more than five times through this value chain and it function as a means of attracting new farmers and also increases the production and the significant impacts as i already told the unit price of the oysters has increased several fold, uh, folds for, uh, through this value chain and the consumers uh, are having more confidence about the uh, purity and the quality of the oysters and now there is an increased market for uh, live oysters single live oysters in high end restaurants so um, because of the increased income uh, or the um, increased return from this activity more and more farmers uh, um we are coming to this venture so apart from empowering the rural women as an alternate source of livelihood income the success of viral farming has also attracted um, several main farmers to this venture and uh, so uh, so uh, because they are they are also using our vap unit that is the value added production unit for the production of value added products by selling this value added products uh, they will be getting higher return so this um, income are attracting more and more farmers to this venture and this is one of the self help group um, here uh, uh, women uh, women uh, with women male, male are also there male counterparts are also there and they have developed a brochure with the uh, under the brand name misuris oysters and uh, the decorated live oyster decorate no decorated oyster meat they are selling at the rate of about uh, rupees 800 per kilogram 
And now the live oysters are a growing value chain. There is an increase in demand for live oysters in the high-end restaurants. And um, uh, we are, now we are selling the live oysters, small, small oysters uh, with a size range of about 60 to 70 millimeter. We are uh, we're selling at the rate of one single oyster, uh, the 40 rupees. And the medium oysters we are selling for with the 50 rupees per single piece and the large oysters. The more than 100 millimeter, we are selling for um, uh, rupees uh, 60 per piece. So the live oysters, um, market demand grows, and also the flavored oysters. And, and the depurated live oysters are given different flavors, and um, uh, we, uh, we, ha we have given to this to a, uh, to a tasting panel uh, by adding some um, orange uh, essence or cardamom essence. So the, these flavored live oysters are also having a high market demand in the, the cities like Cochin. And these are our major clients, 8 Boston, uh, Lulu Grand Hyatt, Abad, um, Casino Hotel. These are our major clients uh, for, the, for the consumption of live oyster, decorated live oyster. This is a graph showing the details of the live oyster sale uh, for the past eight to 10 years. And um, because of the uh, fourth of CMFRA, Kochi's first oyster bar was opened at 8th Boston Hotel. And um, this itself shows the demand of the, um, the single live oysters in the high-end restaurants. So uh, because of the trust on the uh, CMFRA, this our, uh, they, they are fully depending, they are fully depending on the uh, our the farm produce, the depurated farm produce. And um, they are selling at the rate of uh, um, 2,500 because uh, three, three single oysters plus a colossal sea fever, and they are selling at the rate of uh, 2,500 per plate. So uh, now the oysters have become a major part of the menu of the high-end restaurants uh, in Kochi City. This is, um, and they are inspecting the uh, our farm site the periodically uh, to ensure the quality, uh, um, safety, and the purity of the product. And um, uh, this is uh, um, a picture showing uh, um, the, um, the event which was organized by the Casino Hotel, that is the annual uh, the dinner of the Cardiological Society of India, which was organized by the Casino Hotel. So in, in, uh, in that event, uh, our live oysters were, uh, were a major attraction. These are some of the glimpses uh, of the event where the live oysters with um, lime um, were the major attraction of the event. And, in, and, and India's first shellfish festival, the Shell Kong, was conducted in 2014 by CMFRA. The several cookery competitions were there, more than 15 stalls were there, and um, the uh, the casino of Kochi, Tash Malabar, and Nifat and Empada participated in this event. And also, the State Fisheries Department and the Kudumisri were also participants of this event. And the Best Oyster Farmer Award was also given uh, during this event. Uh, it, is, uh, the, it is for popularizing, um, popularizing the uh, oysters and the mussels, or the bio oysters, mussels, and clams among the public and for uh, the popularizing the different and uh, the value added products uh, to the public. And uh, this is the picture showing the students from the Michigan State University visiting our farm site and they're interacting with the women farmers of Muttagunnam. And the several series of training programs were organized um, in, um, in other areas for popularizing this uh, bival farming. Um, and for attracting more and more people to this uh, venture, because uh, as compared to uh, the finfish farming, um, bival farming is having uh, uh, so many advantages because um, no feed cost or the seed cost is there. And because uh, normally the bival farming depends on the seeds from the nature. And then, um, then uh, we are constructing the farms with the locally available materials. And then uh, the monitoring, uh, the periodic monitoring is also less than compared to the thin fish farming. So different um, trainings were organized in Chetua, uh, Pulut, uh, the Kodagalur area for um, popularizing this farming. And uh, the demonstration of this uh, um, 
the farming activities like uh, the construction of the ren uh, were given by the trained women farmers uh, from motavannam so it is for increasing the confidence uh, uh, confidence uh, among the new farmers when these trained women farmers are giving the demonstration training so it will build uh, the confidence of the new farmers for um, taking up this venture these are some of the newspaper clippings about the harvest and um, um, harvest of oysters and mussels uh, from the area and, and, and this sorry and this is a clipping showing the inspection um, of our farming site by the gran happy which they are doing periodically to ensure the, the quality of the oysters which they are preparing from our farm sites and um, a, the book Uh, the the book was published by same of our and the guidance for the good muscle farming practices uh, to help the farmers uh, when there was a scarcity of the muscles and also uh, there was uh, the crowding of muscle farms in the padana area so um, to help the farmers a book was published by same of our and one of the uh, major achievement of this activity is that uh, one of the progressive farmers uh, he himself has set up uh, his own separation and value added production unit uh, by selling the uh, value added products the developing uh, cmfra wrap unit to uh, the hotels like uh, the grand hyatt the casino etc so he um, he has earned the money by selling the wrap products uh, the developed in our wrap unit so he himself has uh, developed uh, a depreciation and value added production uh, unit um, uh, this is a major uh, this is one of the major i think this is the uh, one of its first kind in india that is a farmer itself is establishing a uh, unit and uh, this is the the documentary the featuring uh, the the success story in muscle farming and the motor gunna which was telecasted in uh, asian at news and um, this uh, the documentary has received uh, the state award for the uh, in the category of best photography uh, Uh, I uh, I apologize to all known Malayalis because this is uh, featured in a Malayalam channel, and so it is in the original language. Sir Nartya, Kalumme Kaya Kadalmuriya Krishi Lode, you are needed to know more many beloved people. Kendra Samudra Malaysia Gaveshwar Sabarithne, Sahay Tode Ayiru. ഇന്ത്യയിൽ കടൽ മുരിങ്ങയുടെ കൃഷി ആരംഭിക്കുന്നത് ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി തൊണ്ണൂറ്റി അഞ്ചിൽ അഷ്ടമുടി കായലിലാണ് പിന്നീട് രണ്ടായിരത്തി അഞ്ചിൽ ലോകബാങ്ക് സഹായത്തോടെയാണ് സി എം എഫ് ആർ ഐ വിപുലമായ കൃഷി തുടങ്ങുന്നത് അന്ന് മുപ്പത്തി അഞ്ചോളം സ്ത്രീ സ്വയം സഹായ സംഘങ്ങൾ ചേർന്നാണ് മൂത്തകുന്നത്തും പരിസര പ്രദേശങ്ങളുമായി കൃഷി ആരംഭിച്ചത് അന്ന് രണ്ട് ടൺ മാത്രമായിരുന്നു ഉൽപാദനമെങ്കിൽ ഇന്നത് ഇരുപത് ടണ്ണിലേറെയായി മാറിയിരിക്കുന്നു മൂത്തകുന്നത്ത് ഇത്തവണ വിളവെടുപ്പ് നടത്തിയത് പതിനാറ് കൃഷിയിടങ്ങളിലാണ് സി എം എഫ് ആർ ഐയുടെ സാങ്കേതിക വിദ്യ ഉപയോഗിച്ചാണ് കർഷക സംഘങ്ങൾ കൃഷിയിറക്കിയത് ഇവിടുത്തെ മൊളസ്കൻ ഫിഷറീസ് ഡിവിഷനാണ് കൃഷിക്ക് ആവശ്യമായ നിർദ്ദേശങ്ങൾ നൽകുന്നത് ഈ വർഷം പതിമൂന്ന് ഫാമുകളിൽ നിന്നായി ഏകദേശം ഷെല്ലോട് കൂടിയ ഇരുപത് ടൺ ഓയിസ്റ്റർ ആണ് നമുക്ക് ലഭിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലെ കല്ലുമേക്കായ മൂന്ന് ഫാമുകളിൽ നിന്നായി ആറര ടൺ ഷെല്ലോട് കൂടി നമുക്ക് ലഭിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇതിൻ്റെ വില നിശ്ചയിക്കുന്നത് സി എം എഫ് ആർ ഐ ആണ് ഈ വർഷം നിശ്ചയിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന വില ഓയിസ്റ്ററിന് അറുന്നൂറ് രൂപ ഒരു കിലോഗ്രാമിനും കല്ലുമേക്കായ അറുന്നൂറ്റി അറുപത് രൂപ ഒരു കിലോഗ്രാമിനും ആണ് സ്വാഭാവിക കൃഷിയിടങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നും വിളവെടുപ്പ് നടത്തിയതിനു ശേഷം സി എം എഫ് ആർ ഐ തന്നെ വികസിപ്പിച്ചെടുത്ത ശുദ്ധീകരണ പ്രക്രിയക്ക് ശേഷമാണ് വിപണനത്തിനായി എത്തിക്കുന്നത് ഏകദേശം നവംബർ ഡിസംബർ മാസങ്ങളിലാണ് കൃഷി ഇറക്കുന്നത് ഇതിന്റെ വളർച്ചയ്ക്ക് സപ്ലിമെന്ററി ഫീഡ് ആവശ്യമില്ലാത്തതിനാൽ മുതൽ മുടക്ക് വളരെ കുറവാണ് നവംബർ ഡിസംബർ ഇറക്കിയ കൃഷി ഏകദേശം ആറ് ഏഴ് മാസത്തിന് ശേഷം മഴയ്ക്ക് മുമ്പായി നമ്മൾ വിളവെടുക്കുന്നു 
വിളവെടുത്തതിന് ശേഷം ഇവയുടെ പുറന്തോടിലെ അഴുക്ക് നീക്കം ചെയ്യുന്നതിനായി ജെറ്റ് വാഷ് ചെയ്യുന്നു ജെറ്റ് വാഷ് ചെയ്ത ഇവ സേമ ഫാറയെ വികസിപ്പിച്ചെടുത്ത ശുദ്ധീകരണ പ്രക്രിയയായ ഡിപ്യുറേഷന് വിധേയമാകുന്നു എന്താണ് ഡിപ്യുറേഷൻ എന്ന് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഫിൽറ്ററിങ്ങും യു വി ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റും ചെയ്ത ഒരു ജലത്തിൽ ഈ ജെറ്റ് വാഷ് ചെയ്ത ഈ ഡിപ്യുറേഷൻ്റെ കർഷക വേൾഡ് ബാങ്ക് എയ്ഡഡ് എൻ ഐ പി പ്രോജക്ടായും കൃഷി ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഇപ്പോൾ ഇവരുടെ വിജയത്തിന് കാരണം and um, this is a, a, another activity which was done in the, the sindhudurg district of maharashtra it was done under the united nations development program and then uh, in uh, 2014 cmo farai has set up a demo farm uh, in the sindhudurg district uh, in an area called wadata and in 2015 of um uh, 2014 a self help group named procedi uh, consisting of 10 members were trained uh, for the oyster farming in the area because uh, uh, these areas are having a very potential for oyster farming so these uh, women farmers were trained for oyster farming and in uh, 2015 there was a bumper harvest um, from the farms uh, which uh, which were put in the wadatar area and after this uh, so many uh, women self uh, self help groups were attracted to this venture so after that the training and the demonstration of the oyster farming was given to various self help groups in the uh, district of sindhudurg in maharashtra uh, like wadata the tara mumbai the venkurla and um, devbag areas as a means of popularizing oyster farming in the uh, area so cmo farai has successfully demonstrated the oyster farming in the um, district of sindhudurg in maharashtra um, so training were given to more than the 200 num- uh, 200 members the hands on uh, these are the pictures showing uh, the training and the hands on training was also given on rain making and the various stages of uh, rack construction for oyster farming and in 2015 um, a bumper harvest of the oysters uh, were uh, uh, were were taken and about 500 springs containing 7000 numbers of oysters were harvested from a farm site um, in atwada uh, then they uh, the sold these oysters at the rate of rupees 150 to 200 per dozen and the profit earned was uh, around 45000 from e- from a single farm with the sale of live oysters and shucked meat and this is the newspaper clipping uh, the featuring um, uh, the the oyster harvest by this uh, women self help groups and this is a video showing the success story of oyster farming in wadata the fisher women of wadata a small village on india's west coast are in the middle of weaving their dreams for many years they toil for long hours to return only with the how the rain comes the oysters shuruvatila kinari la jaun ami okay mi choti choti kalwa dukachi bara un la tar purcha mahina chi felt that their efforts go on to simplify their the most important thing farming. is that if i must um, help and ask arunauka formed after much opposition and coaxing gavatle lok manal nali ki nahi nahi amala yachat interest nahi amala vel pan nahi he rikam dekadanchi kaam hai tithe tumhi kara amala kai jamnar nahi ami october la lavla 2013 la lavla to pan asa vatla hota ki honaras nahi to evda kai laksha dur lakshas kela ami to uba kela kai lok manachi kai honar hai ami todun taku asa karu tasa karu khup amala hi kela pan matla nahi apan hena एक गेमच खेळतो असं आम्ही तो प्रकल्प द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग नोटिस हियर इज दॅट दीज विमेन सर्कल ग्रुप्स आर अंडरटेकिंग एव्हरी ऍक्टिव्हिटी राईट फ्रॉम द कल्चर प्रिपरेशन एंड देन रेन मेकिंग एंड ऑल्सो द ऑल्स इट्स अ फार्म कंस्ट्रक्शन बिकॉज़ इन केरला द विमेन विथ वेरी लिटिल फॉर्मल एजुकेशन टुक टू ऑयस्टर फार्मिंग विथ ईज एंड कॉन्फिडेंस 
they set up 450 ropes with empty oyster shells on bamboo frames. Naturally available oyster spats, very common in the Vadatar Creek, attach themselves to the empty shells over time and were shells over time and were harvested to produce a bounty for its farmers. Uh, the most important uh, thing is that uh, the women uh, herself are doing every activity. But in Kerala, um, they are doing uh, the rain making or the culture preparation. But the farm construction, uh, it was undertaken by the male counterparts. But here in Vodata, what we have observed is every activity is taken by the women. They themselves are going to the water and, um, and doing the farm construction and um, hanging the rents also. So um, it is an important uh, point that is to be uh, noted. Uh, it may be, uh, um, this is the secret of their success. And, the, and uh, this, the one demo form which was put in uh, Vodata, um, the success of this, uh, the demo form. So th the same activity has been replicated in various areas of the central district. Uh, because of the success uh, in the Vodata, the same activity has been repl replicated in the, uh, the various areas of the central district. And uh, uh, I think uh, more than 50 or 60 farms were put in the Sindhudit district. Okay, and the coming to the next group, the clams. Uh, the, the commercially important the clam species in the country are the Lorica citronoides, Paphia melbarca, Maratus species, the Catalyse ophema, and Sonatus scripta. We all know. And uh, the black clam, the Dilopia citronoides, is the most important clam species landed in the country. More than 85% of the, um, the, uh, the clam production in the country depends on this, uh, the single species. And the major proportion of this, uh, the species, the harvest of them, the Vempanad Lake, which is the largest, the Pakish Nether Lake on the west coast of the country. And uh, the fisheries of the, the clams and the fin fishes um, they provide the major livelihood um, around the, uh, the coastal communities around the lake. And more than 5,000 fishermen are involved in the activity of uh, uh, the clam fishing in the area. And these are some of the pictures of the, of the bival, uh, black clam fishery in the Vampanoid Lake. And so both male, uh, the male and the female are involved in this activity. And so uh, uh, the male used to uh, the fish the clams using um, a, a net called kulli. And they are bringing this uh, the product to the um, to the houses, and the females are then uh, the boiling it, then processing it, and they are selling to the market. So both male and female are involved in the activity, and in Bayamperan, more than five thousand fishermen are actually uh, depending on this clam fishery as their major the livelihood source. And this is the castrant of the Villorica citronoides or the black clam in the Bayamperan Lake over the past uh, fifteen years. So uh, in 2006, uh, and the cash was around uh, the 75,000 tons. It has come to about uh, 40,000 tons in 2021. So um, it also affects uh, the fishermen, uh, which uh, depending on this resource as their major livelihood uh, option. So um, the only thing we can do is uh, the clam relaying. That is, uh, we are um, the, taking the uh, seeds or the, the baby clams from the areas where they are attention. And then the, we are putting into areas uh, where, the, where there are favorable water quality parameters and also uh, favorable sediment characteristics. So in that way, we have done the clam relaying in different parts of Vedran and also in Ashtamadi for Papia Malabarka. So this is a way for protecting the resource from uh, the depletion and also for stock enhancement. So clam farming protocols were developed uh, for both species, that is the Velocious Epinoides in the Vampanoid Lake and the Tafia Malabarka in the Ashtamodi Lake. So optimum stocking density for the both species were determined about 550 per meter square. And uh, both species were found to prefer the Santee substratum. And these are the, um, the areas which were demarked for clam relay in both Ashtamudi and the Vimpanad. For enhancing the, the stock, for enhancing the, the clam production, uh, and, for into, uh, for, uh, and for boosting the clam fishery and enhancing the livelihood option for the clam fishers, and the baby clams were relayed after identifying suitable sites on the northern side of the Sanir Mukundarisha. 
of the paper art breakup. Uh, it was an activity which was done on 2020, um, beginning of 2020. And approximately 200 tons of baby clamps were relayed in two areas of the Vemparan, about one foot Ticheri and Shakatagad area on the northern side of the Tanir Mukham barrage. And uh, in the Ticheri area, we have relayed uh, the, about 140 tons of baby clamps, and in the Shakatagad area, about 60 tons of baby clamps were relayed in the beginning of 2020. And um, this initiative of relaying the, the baby clamps on various sides of the Vemparan increased the clam production and also helped the fishers harvest around 10 tons of clam per day. So the harvesting, um, we have relayed the baby clams on 2021 uh, beginning, it was 2020 beginning, and uh, we have harvested the um, adult clams uh, on uh, December 2021. So do, uh, so a one and a half uh, years of long undisturbed um, the dawn period was there because of the COVID pandemic, we couldn't um, harvest uh, in between. So uh, when we have harvested, we have uh, the fishers uh, were getting ar around 10 tons of clam per day. So um, uh, it was a uh, bumper harvest for the fishers, and the, and the supervision, the supervision of the of the relaying side was done by uh, on one side it was done by Tichiri Ulnadan Malsi Tulwali Sahakarana Sangam, and um, after the harvest they are harvesting around the 500 tons of uh, the clam adult clams per day, and they are selling the meat to the right of rupees 150 per kilogram in the nearest market. So uh, earlier, during the time of relaying, we were expecting a seven-fold increase uh, from um, this relayed site. But uh, when, the, um, the, when the harvest uh, was started, um, so now we are expecting a ten-fold increase in the, in the clam production from this area. Uh, because um, the December only, we have December 2021, we have started the harvest and the harvest is still continuing. So, uh, uh, this is the uh, figure from uh, one area, that is the Kichiri area. In the Chakatagad area, most of the, um, the beneficiaries were women. And during the tough pandemic period, when there was no other um, livelihood source, this relay clams were the major source of livelihood or the income generating source for these women fishers. And these started, um, uh, started uh, harvesting the clams gradually. So even though we couldn't uh, estimate the, uh, the production or the harvested production, but um, uh, it has become the major source of livelihood during this critical period. So I think it itself has fulfilled uh, the very purpose of the project. So, uh, and the long undisturbed uh, uh, the drawing period of one and a half years has facilitated at least two uh, spawnings, the resulting in the staff settlement in the area. Um, in, uh, and this area was a known, uh, known uh, clam fishing area. Uh, there was no regular fishing for the clams in the area. So, it, so uh, this uh, relay has established a new clam bed in the area. Um, this is the uh, figure showing the harvest, the harvest of the clams. The more than 20, uh, 20 canals are harvesting this resource every day. And these are the figures. And uh, this is um, attracted media attention, and this is uh, uh, and the media coverage was very wide, and this has come up in uh, various newspapers. These are some of the clippings. And uh, it was also um, this uh, the success story was also um, featured and, and it was telecasted in the DD News Malayalam. So once again, I apologize to all non-Malayalis because this um, the video is in um, video which was telecasted in the DD News is in uh, regional language only. Vampanata Kaile, Kaka Sambat the Punuriji Vipikan, Lakendra Samudra Malsa Gavishna Stabat in the Shramam, one Vijay. Beloved Paturangi Dode, Churingi the Pathet and Kakiana, Malsaturilagal Pradidinum, E. Pradeshangal in the Shakerikinada. Reporter Gada Kailil Kakude Lebia the Goranya Pacha Telatil, Tanil Mukambandi Nevadakabaga the Kicheri, Chaka to Garda in the Pradeshangal Lai, Kaka Kunjangal in the Shebichana, Kaka Punerji Vena Pathetika to recommend other. Aggression Nutin after the Tanolam, Kaka Vitagalana Namrebe, Nixhebichirikin, Padinara Hectri East Salatum, Nali Hectri, Maturusalatum. 
അതിൽ നിന്ന് ഏഴു മടങ്ങിൽ കൂടുതൽ പ്രൊഡക്ഷനാണ് നമ്മൾ പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുന്നത് രണ്ടു വർഷത്തെ കാലയളവിനുള്ളിൽ ഈ ഭാഗങ്ങളിൽ കക്കയുടെ ഉൽപാദനം വർദ്ധിച്ചതായി കണ്ടെത്തി എറണാകുളം ജില്ലാ പഞ്ചായത്തിന് കീഴിൽ ഫിഷറീസ് വകുപ്പിന്റെ നേതൃത്വത്തിലും സി എം എഫ് ആറയുടെ ശാസ്ത്ര സാങ്കേതിക മേൽനോട്ടത്തിലുമാണ് കക്കയുടെ പുനരുജ്ജീവന ജീവന ഇവിടെ ഈ പറഞ്ഞു കൊടുത്ത് ഈ കക്ക ഫിഷർമെനെ കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഇവരെ കൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യിച്ചാണ് വിളവെടുപ്പ് ലെവലിലേക്ക് നമ്മൾ എത്തിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ഏകദേശം ആയിരത്തി അഞ്ഞൂറ് ടൺ കക്ക ഉൽപാദനമാണ് കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെ നിക്ഷേപിച്ച ഭാഗങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് സി എം എഫ് ആർ ഐ പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുന്നത് ഈ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ആറിൽ ഏകദേശം എഴുപത്തി അയ്യായിരം ടണ്ണോളം ഈ ബ്ലാക്ക് ക്ലം കറുത്ത കക്ക വേവനാട് കായലിൽ നിന്ന് ലഭിച്ചത് ഇപ്പോൾ രണ്ടായിരത്തി പത്തൊമ്പത് ഇരുപത് കാലഘട്ടമായപ്പോഴേക്കും നാൽപ്പത്തി മൂവായിരം ടണ്ണിലേക്ക് എത്തിച്ചുരുങ്ങി അത് ഇവിടുത്തെ കക്ക മത്സ്യത്തൊഴിലാളികളെ വളരെയേറെ ബാധിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ അവരെ അവരെ കൂടുതൽ അവരുടെ ക്ഷേമം ഉറപ്പു വരുത്താനും കൂടെയാണ് ഇങ്ങനെയൊരു സംരംഭം എന്നാൽ ഈ പദ്ധതിയിലൂടെ കക്കയുടെ ഉൽപാദനം ഒരു പരിധിവരെയെങ്കിലും വർദ്ധിപ്പിക്കാനായെന്നത് ശ്രദ്ധേയമാണ് വിളവെടുപ്പ് തുടങ്ങിയതോടെ ചുരുങ്ങിയത് പത്ത് ടൺ കക്കയാണ് മത്സ്യത്തൊഴിലാളികൾ പ്രതിദിനം ഈ പ്രദേശങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് ശേഖരിക്കുന്നത് കക്കൽ അതിന്റെ മൊത്തം തൂക്കമാണ് ഈ അഞ്ഞൂറ് കിലോ വരുന്നത് അതിൽ നിന്ന് ഇറച്ചി മാത്രമായിട്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ പതിനഞ്ച് കിലോയ്ക്കും പതിനേഴ് കിലോയ്ക്കും ഇടയ്ക്കുള്ള രീതിയിലാണ് കിട്ടുന്നത് അതിന് ഒരു കിലോത്തിന് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നിലവിൽ നൂറ്റി ഇരുപത് രൂപ മുതൽ നൂറ്റി അൻപത് രൂപ വരെ നിലവിൽ വിപണിയിൽ വില ഉണ്ട് കക്കയിറച്ചിക്ക് പുറമെ നിലവിൽ വിപണിയിൽ വില ഉണ്ട് കക്കയിറച്ചിക്ക് പുറമെ കക്ക തോടിന് ഒരു കിലോഗ്രാമിന് നാല് രൂപ ലഭിക്കും കക്ക വാരലുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് ഉപജീവനം നടത്തുന്ന നൂറുകണക്കിന് മനുഷ്യരുടെ വരുമാനം വർദ്ധിപ്പിക്കാൻ പദ്ധതി വഴി സാധിച്ചു ഭാവിയിലും ഈ പ്രദേശങ്ങളിൽ കക്കയുടെ ലഭ്യത കൂടാൻ പദ്ധതി സഹായകരമാകും ജോസഫ് മാർട്ടിൻ ഡി ഡി ന്യൂസ് കൊച്ചി So thanks very much uh, for the excellent talk and uh, thanks to all who joined today for the talk before we go to discussion um, i have provided the feedback link in the chat box if you are, all of you can spend a minute uh, just fill up the form uh, in the link and that'll be great uh, and also if you have any questions please uh, put your questions in the chat box um, and we are always looking to expand our corner network so if any of you are interested to join our team please um, send us an email at two uh, efs talks at gmail.com so let's move into the discussion part uh, we have 30 minutes for discussion or 15 to 30 minutes so please use the hand raise feature in the zoom um, and also type in your question um, in chat box um, i will give you a minute to fill the feedback form and meanwhile i will have a few simple and one difficult question for vidya <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so vidya a very good presentation um uh i just want to reflect on the topic of the talk um um and and just uh, curious about the um, there are se- several examples you showed how how the um, bivalve fishery has been enhanced in different ways one is through aquaculture one is through stock enhancement and a few other techniques um but ref- reflecting on the topic i think i just would like to have your input on how how uh, what kind of uh, strategies you used to convince the fishers and farmers to actually get involved in, in these activities you know some some are already doing uh, but, but uh, the first example you told about oysters probably the feel i got is that there was not many people doing but now 
you have reached to a point that you have convinced many fisherwomen and they have started their own uh, way of doing things. But, you know, and in the videos, it's very obvious they are saying, you know, many were not, uh, you know, were not positive in their own community about this activity. So there must be a tremendous effort from your side, actually, to engage them uh, and, you know, bring their confidence up to take up this activity when they could some, do some other jobs, you know, to get their income. So there must be some incentive for them. And what what, what sort of, you know, uh, what, what did you, how did you uh, make, uh, made it happen? You know, so how, how do you make them convinced to do this uh, when, when in a normal day, they spend most of the day doing other jobs to get their, you know, minimum income to for survival. So, so I think it's a pretty important point considering the topic of this uh, talk, uh, that how you develop that engagement with the fishers and how, what what was the positive things you actually uh, made them convince, convince them to take take up this, do, do this on an, an experimental basis, at least for the first few years. Yeah, uh, it's a nice question, Deepak. Uh, actually, uh, it is, uh, we have to put a lot of effort in the beginning. Because uh, um, uh, we, 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 uh, it is very difficult to convince the farmers. Unlike other people, it is very difficult to convince the farmers because uh, um, they are the people who are working on daily wages. So uh, when they are um, uh, uh, taking up another job and when they are leaving their uh, previous job, uh, so we have to uh, convince them uh, uh, whether this job is uh, um, assuring some more income to them. So in the uh, earlier part, uh, um, we were giving 100% financial support to them. So wherever there is a new area, we are, uh, we are, uh, uh, pro uh, we are providing 100% financial support to the farmers in the beginning. When we are constructing a demo farm, uh, we are giving all the uh, financial support, the technical advice, uh, every uh, everything, at each and every step. It is for improving the confidence of the farmers because uh, they are very new to this uh, venture. So they don't know whether um, uh, it is a success or it, whether it is a failure. So if they are investing from their pocket, uh, they will be reluctant to do all these things. Well, so what we are doing is that when we are constructing a demo farm, we are giving uh, the full support, 100% uh, um, financially, we are supporting the farmers. Then after, uh, um, so uh, they will be doing it as a part-time job in the beginning. So after the uh, first harvest of about uh, six to seven months, uh, seven months growing period, after the first harvest, if it is a success, it will, it will bring confidence to the people. So, uh, and we are, uh, the, we are providing all the financial support and also uh, the whatever the farm products is sold, the, the all income will be uh, given to the farmers. So it will improve their confidence. Uh, so in uh, one or two seasons, we will be uh, supporting them financially. And, uh, and after uh, the two seasons, uh, um, uh, with this confidence, uh, they will be able to join to this venture fully. So they will be leaving their uh, part-time job. Uh, I mean, uh, they will be leaving their previous job and they will be um, coming to this uh, category because of this uh, um, increased income. Because uh, as I already told, this value addition brings uh, um, new income to the fishermen. Because um, if they are the selling the oysters from the natural bed, they will be getting only uh, the uh, 300 rupees per kilo and all. So when, they, uh, when we are adding a value to the product, so this 300 rupees uh, shoot up to uh, 700 or 800 rupees per kilo. And they, are, they get a uh, very strong link with the um, high-end restaurants also. And because uh, it is a CMFRA product. So now these farmers are selling the product directly to the uh, high-end restaurants and they, 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 um, they are um, uh, all the income um, 
the uh, income receiving from this, uh, uh, we are giving to these people only. And we are also helping them to sell these products uh, through the, the same of our active sales counter. And also uh, earlier it was through NIFAP stalls. Now we are helping them to sell these products through the uh, active sales counter. So they are getting a better income. So after one or two seasons, they are um, uh, they, they are uh, the fully convinced about this uh, the success. They are fully convinced about this uh, income from this venture. And, uh, and this is what we have done in uh, um, Wadathor also in the Sajudhi district. The firstly, we have um, uh, uh, put up a Jammu farm there. And then uh, the, the success of the harvest has attracted many new members to this venture. So when you say 100% um, financial support, uh, does that include their daily wages as well? A day, uh, it, uh, it includes uh, no, the uh, daily wages in the sense uh, we are not able to uh, the provide fully uh, full daily wages as uh, they were getting earlier. But uh, for the farm construction, uh, we are involving them. So we are giving the daily wages as they, are, they were getting earlier. So um, farm construction, if it is uh, the thousand rupees, thousand ancient rupees uh, per person, we are providing it. So whatever they are doing, we, uh, they are getting paid for it for the first one or two seasons. And after that, um, they, they will be only uh, doing it and we, we can support them financially after one or two seasons. Yeah. Uh, just looking at super, superficially, because we talked about oysters, we talked about uh, green mussels, and we also talked about black clams. Um, even though you talked through all the species and here and you know i just want a picture on you know what what is the scale we are talking about like you know how how many people are involved in these activities are there more people going after oysters or is it the you know i mean we what is uh, like, I don't know how many people are involved. So if you say, um, is it 80% oysters and 20% mussels or, you know, yeah. So, uh, but we can't say like that because it is all regional preferences. Because in the Cochin area, the more people are into the oyster farming. So, um, um, because the consumer preference is more for oysters in the, uh, the five-star hotels rather than mussels. But in the northern Kerala, they are having a, a good preference for the mussels. So uh, they are ready to um, ready to take up the mussels in every form, either in the value-added product uh, form or in the live form. Um, or um, uh, they uh, they have they are having their own cuisines with the mussels. So uh, it is only the regional preference, actually. The, yeah, the demand for oysters are from the five-star orders, and because it's the most People going after, you know, it's probably the international, um, you know, foreigners who actually oh. like having raw oysters yeah, yeah. and everything. Uh, so, yeah. but, but it could be a different story a few years back, you know, when and there was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know. So oysters is a new thing, I guess, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. so what species of oyster we are talking about? Because you, you mm -hmm. did mention about many species in the beginning, but uh, which, which oyster okay, we... Okay. Yeah, we are culturing only class of stream addresses. In the Kerala coast, we are culturing only class of stream addresses. And yeah. this is the oysters uh, we are processing and giving, um, giving through uh, the outlets. And the mussels uh, in, in the, the Cochin area, we are culturing the Parana bird species. And uh, what about the uh, um, North. North Kerala? What North, oyster uh, they North have? Kerala also the same species, that is the Parana bird. The green mussel. The green mussel is a species. We are no, no, I mean North India. I mean, what uh, oyster they Northern Kerala. Oh, no, North India, it was class of And um, we could observe the high meat content after the harvest. Usually, uh, the oysters uh, we are culturing, we are getting a meat content of about eight, uh, seven to eight percent. But in um, uh, no Northwest coast in the Maharashtra, we got a um, it was with another species, and we got a meat content of about 11 to 12 percent. Yeah, so you talked about the uh, wild seed collection and hatchery. So, how much percentage will be the hatchery produced fat when you talk about these activities?
Sorry, you are you are mute. Sorry. Mute. Oh, sorry. I have to probably change the settings again. Wait. Yeah. Can you unmute, please? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, okay. And the hatchery produced the seed. Uh, it is. Uh, um, it is a small percentage actually. We are uh, normally depending on the wild seed. Uh, so um, now, uh, now we have started using the hatchery produced seed also. Uh, because of, uh, in the case of mussels, uh, because uh, there is a scarcity of mussel seeds uh, on the, uh, the central Kerala now, uh, because there is an invasion of other species, uh, um, whatever. So there is a scarcity of mussel seeds. Uh, so um, it is difficult to collect the seeds from the wild for the mussel farming. So now um, we, uh, we are planning to depend on uh, the hatchery produced seed for the mussel farming. And, um, and the compared to the wild and the, uh, the hatchery produced seed, the hatchery uh, the produced seed is only, um, it is contributing only a very meager percent for the farming. Only so the, 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 yeah. so the um, hatchery production is uh, contained to just the mussels, right? No oysters and no clams, right? And the hatchery production is confined to uh, oysters and mussels. In the vegan center, uh, the we are um, the producing the seeds of uh, the start of oysters and mussels, not for clams. Yeah, because it, it was a bit of surprise because if you look, go through the uh, scientific articles, there are not much, uh, you know, yes. papers on actually tropical oysters. Yes. So I was just wondering, you know, you know, if you have already a technology developed, you know, probably this should be a big, uh, one of the big peppers in, in the aquaculture, tropical oysters, because most oyster hatchery technologies are based on, uh, you know, temperate species. So, yeah. Have you published any papers on tropical oysters? I mean, on hatchery production? Or do hatchery we have any? I mean, so I'm just... Uh, hatchery yeah. production, there are some papers. Yeah. So, um, uh, some uh, some researchers have worked on hatchery production, so they have published some papers. Yeah, so that, that, that is one of the um, one of the big project in Australia to develop this technology for tropical oysters because it's not there, it's not available for any. But if you have already established something there, probably it's a, one of the best thing you can do for the scientific community to uh, you know publish and share that information. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, Dev. I think there are a couple of questions in the uh, chat box. Mostly just an appreciation for your talk. Um, uh, so Pritam Pradhan is asking, can you share your PowerPoint um, in WhatsApp or to email? We don't share the PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is we are recording this uh, um, webinar and we'll publish this in our YouTube channel. So. Uh, so after probably two or three weeks, and if with their consent to it, um, the recording will be available in the in our YouTube channel. The link to the YouTube channel you can get from our website. So that is www.fstalks.org. Naresh is asking, what's the local market value of oysters in Kerala? Actually, uh, am I audible? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, I am. Actually. Um, we are selling, uh, CMFR is selling only decorated oysters. Uh, but and the local uh, people, uh, they, they are selling um, uh, non decorated oysters. So there is a high price difference between these two. So um, the, the local people may be uh, getting these oysters for a uh, smaller, smaller price. So we are mainly targeting um, high end restaurants. So um, we are selling decorated oysters at the rate of uh, rupees uh, 700 per kilogram. And uh, non decorated oysters we can get for 300 to 400 kilogram, but the decorated oysters we can sell um, only uh, at this rate, um, 700 to 750 rupees per kilogram. And the single oysters also, uh, decorated single oysters also we are selling uh, at the rate of uh, 40, 50 or 60 per piece, so they are depending, depending on their size. No, um, not many questions in the WhatsApp, but please you keep asking if you have any questions. Um, I have a couple more in my list. Um, 
So you showed that uh, video on steamer for the oyster. Is it for the oysters, right? No, it's for the oysters. Yeah, it can it can be used for the oysters and mussels, but in for oysters, it is very advantageous compared to the mussels because I have already told there is a liquid called nectar in the oyster. It um, it is having many properties. So this nectar can be and be taken while using this technology. So, I, I so like he, the, yeah. yeah, the purpose of doing the steamer is to harvest the nectar. Is that the main purpose or any no, other? No, 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 no. It, uh, it, uh, um, it fastens the opening of the shell because uh, normally it is yeah. very difficult to open the shells of the oysters. The first thing is it, uh, it um, increases, um, uh, it, it speeds the shell opening and also it reduces the loss of moisture. And it also increases the yield, and it is also hygienic and compared to the traditional uh, system of boiling. So, yeah. uh, because of these advantages, uh, um, we are using the steamer. Yeah, well, the first thing strike to my mind is that would it by doing that it will probably cook the uh, meat, and and if you look at the international market, most people eat it raw. And I was, and, but do you no, later? No, I, I, yeah, I know you later but, come to the other other side, and so. I'm assuming, or oh, you could probably say that steamer method is probably only for selling cooked uh, oysters, right? Yeah, yeah. It's only yeah. for uh, oyster meat, actually. So yeah. uh, live oysters, uh, we are not cooking. We are not steaming it. Yeah. Uh, after the decoration, uh, we are selling it as live. Yeah, yeah. Not steaming it. Yeah. I'm just looking at my list if other I have asked all my questions. <laughs> So the 24 hour depuration is enough, uh, Vidya. Sorry, you you gone mute again. I have to wait. Yeah, please unmute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, 24 hours depuration is enough. So uh, 18, 24 yeah. hours depuration is enough. Sometimes we are doing it only for 12 to 18 hours. Yeah. Uh, so, depending on the microbial yeah. load. Yeah, so this is to ensure the quality of the meat, right? We're doing this depuration. And so I will, one question I have written down here, like how would you ensure that is it's, you know, it has reached to the quality you're looking for? Do you do a regular, you know, microbial testing before you sell the meat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do the microbial testing before selling the meat, and also we do the microbial setting of the uh, testing of the water, uh, uh, the uh, the water where we are growing these oysters before selling it to, uh, to the market. Yeah. Okay. So these water samples we are taking periodically, once in a month, because uh, um, I already told these uh, the hotels are coming for the inspection of our farming site. Every month, every month or, uh, or uh, once in two months, etc. So uh, we have to do it uh, to ensure the safety and quality of the product and the purity of the product. Yeah, yeah. So Naresh is asking, how about the disease management you do for oysters? How, how do you manage the disease problems? Do you get Actually, any diseases? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately, we, do, we didn't get any uh, diseases, much diseases, um, only during the salinity drop and all, there will be fouling and all. Um, but when the salinity shoots up, um, it will be uh, okay. And then uh, the other thing on the northern part of the Kerala uh, was um, um, a, a protozoan infection. That is the Parkinson's also me when protozoan. Uh, because of this, uh, uh, most of the farms, uh, um, have, uh, the far, uh, most of the farms, uh, got devastated it can be said that's devastated and and there was a uh, high scarcity for the seeds and high scarcity for the um, uh, uh, muscle adults also so it was due to the protozoan um, infection so um, we have given advisories to the farmers um, and then the crowding can also bring so many infections and then um, so we have tested the uh, the parasite and um, it, uh, it depends upon, it mainly depends upon the water quality parameters. So we will be stopping the farming for some time. When we have any diseases, we will be stopping the farming for some time. Uh, so, um, do you know any water quality parameters that actually indicate 
uh, a disease problem before you actually i know salinity is one of the main factor when the salinity drops um, the chances of infection are more then yeah. uh, the dissolved oxygen also is another factor yeah any other questions uh, if any of you have a question you can unmute and ask you can unmute and ask you can so change the setting so you are able to unmute if you have a question please go ahead Venkat Rao is asking which states oyster is available. Ah, the oysters are available in Kerala, uh, Karnataka, uh, Goa, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat. Um, uh, I'm right. not sure he's asking whether they're available in wild or in the market. I don't know. They are available in the wild. Natural, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have to take it and um, uh, give it to the local market. Natural beds are available in Karnataka, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Goa, and all. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Deepak, hey. sir. This yeah. is Naresh. Yeah, you can ask. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Like, uh, uh, first thing, like, what is the your survival rate, uh, production survival rate? and how you are getting a survival rate and how long it is taking the scale of getting the market size of your oyster. And second thing, like uh, biofouling is one of the biggest problem for oyster farming. So how you are managing the biofouling? So are you getting the good proper shape of oyster for the market? And water quality parameters, are you doing any processing or naturally you are uh, producing that for the depression, you're treating the water, because even sometimes, even you treat for the depression also, still uh, sometimes you may get chance of uh, microbiology infections. So have you faced those kind of things? Just general question. Uh, the first thing, uh, the survival rate, we are getting 60 to 70% of the survival. And um, the next thing is, um, and the next thing is um, the biofouling. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, when the salinity drops, biofouling is more. And then, uh, actually, we are suspending the farming for some time. That is the main thing we are doing. And the, regarding the water quality parameters, um, we are doing it monthly. Uh, no, 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 any artificial uh, the water. Uh, we are doing with the natural water. And the depuration, uh, we are um, taking the same the same water where we are growing the oysters and uh, and then we are chlorinating it and then we are um, the sending this water to UV filters so there are no chances of uh, the microbial infection after uh, so many treatments and all. Okay, uh, depression is good, but uh, have you faced any uh, ammonia levels increase in your depression tank? Because when the oysters started, because oysters don't feed in the depression, they started cleaning their uh, intestine or digestive system. They started in search for uh, water for food and started recirculating water. It's keep on cleaning. And the fecal matter settled more in the depression tank. So does that in 24 hours, does that a chance that you can increase the ammonia level? Actually, in the normal depuration, we can starve the oysters for some time. Um, even if it is not filtered water or the UV filtered water, we can uh, starve the oysters uh, for some time um, and can do the depuration. This is what we are doing in the Ashtamudi Lake. We don't have a proper depuration unit there. Only uh, the farmers are um, they're taking the clams and they are um, they are doing the depuration by their own. Uh, so. Um, so, as you said, that the fecal load will be more, but we are replacing the water at twice or thrice. In, in this 18 to 24 hours, we are replacing the water to avoid the, um, to minimize the ammonia load. So, there are no, not much problems if we are uh, replacing this water. Yeah, thank you. But uh, when you replace the water, but the temperature is changing, right? So whenever each time you replace the water, so how you are managing that one? Because uh, temperature and uh, 
temperature is and pH is like a, have a correlation for the water. So how you manage that? Uh, the temperature is not a very much important factor. The temperature changes will be very less actually uh, when we are replacing the water. Uh, so and the temperature um, is a uh, it doesn't have a. Uh, and a very good impact on this uh, while depuration by drawing the oysters it is okay while the depuration it doesn't have a much roll on it so while replacing the motors we don't have uh, the much problems uh, regarding the temperature and all and uh, the ammonia also ammonia load also okay okay so the salinity is uh, in the depuration you're changing from the natural salinity or uh, it's the same salinity in even in the depuration because when the oyster is edible when going for eating so it is like more to more salty so you're reducing the uh, salinity to just get less salinity uh, less salt no. taste when they're consuming no no no, no 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 the oysters are actually they are salty yeah. so they, we are not using any any artificial type of salinization uh, or reducing the salinity uh, before uh, so the natural salinity only we are using sorry break up vidya uh, your signal was weak so we didn't hear that last part okay uh, is it audible now yes yes it is yeah um, we are uh, not using any artificial type of salinization or we are reducing the salinity before the product reaches the market uh, we are um, using the same uh, same natural water where the uh, oysters are growing for the filtration and the same salinity we are using uh, the oysters are um, truly uh, they are very salty okay now what is our approximate uh, salinity that we are maintaining there Actually, um, oysters are quite hardy than the mussels. The mussels need a salinity uh, uh, minimum uh, more than 15 ppg. But oysters, they can survive up to uh, 10 ppg. 8 to 10 ppg also they can survive. Okay, thank you. Actually, I ask all this because I am also an oyster technician. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe Deepak Sanu. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah thank you. Like, Naresh also gave a talk before. In the FS talks, okay, okay. Uh, he is an um, al algae specialist. He, uh, yeah, so one of the <laughs> one of the well-known algae technicians. <laughs> Thank you, Naresh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, when you're asking what's the procedure of oyster farming, I think that's a bit a long response. Do you have any reference to uh, point out, Vidya? Pardon? Uh, this is just a question. Vengadra was asking, what's the procedure of oyster farming? The procedure I have already told, like uh, uh, it can be uh, procured actually from the wild or from the natural, I mean, uh, hatchery produced. We are preparing the, um, we are putting the oyster vents on the farms and the natural spat settlement occurs uh, and we are monthly monitoring it. And um, after six to seven months, we are harvesting. Yeah, you, uh, I think you, you probably have some uh, handbooks you can go through. Yeah, we I guess. have, we yeah. have handbooks on oyster farming, handbooks and um, several articles also on oyster farming. Yeah, can you give your uh, email address so they can you know contact you? Sure, sure. You put sure, that sure. email address in the chat in the chat box, please. Thank okay, you. Okay, 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 okay. Sure, sure. And also, um, yeah, and also give us a feedback if you haven't given a feedback yet. So uh, yeah, Vidya put uh, her email address in the chat box. So if you have more questions, please feel free to ask Vidya, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone. Uh, I think it's a long day. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's almost one and a half hours and I think Vidya probably had to go to bed now. <laughs> so she was doing a long journey today. Uh, yeah, so thanks very much for giving this time uh, and in your very busy schedule, Vidya. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity, Deepak. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, so we'll see you next, uh, next talk in, in two weeks. 
and until then bye thank you